Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Today we're going to dive into Handbrake. Today you'll know how to compress your videos. Welcome to Know How, the show where we show you how to do stuff. I as Actar, my little buddy, I'm Skipper Leo Laporte, and today we're going to show you. Really, it's uh, it's one way of many to compress video files. It's your favorite way, my favorite way too. It's a little free program written by French schoolboys called Handbrake. Yeah, we're going to do, talk about Handbrake because a lot of folks were wondering about. Our Media Center episodes, how do you get the video files from DVDs, and how do you get the best quality on those MP4s or whatever else you're going to make? Also, how are you going to have the smallest files to have them streaming online? So many different ways that we're going to dive into Handbrake. It's cross-platform. That's another reason why I picked that one. Windows oh, and Mac. That's right. And that's why I was like, okay, look, I know you guys are going to have a lot of different opinions on what to use, and we love hearing about that. So don't forget, drop us an email at knowhow at twit.tv with your best and favorite ideas on uh, what compression software you use. But today, it's all about Handbrake, and we're going to use an example video to show you all the power that's in this piece of software. So there's two kind of terms we're going to use here that you need to know. One is ripping. That is, and it doesn't mean ripping off, by the way. We're not encouraging you to rip stuff off. In no. fact, this should be content you already own. You bought the DVD. But ripping it, whether it's a CD or a DVD or even a Blu-ray, is taking the digital data that's on physical media and moving it onto your hard drive. That's the ripping part. But then we're also going to do some transcoding because if you merely copy over the DVD files, then you have to have a DVD player to play it. It takes up a lot more space than it has to. And that's where Handbrake comes in. Well, that's the other thing. DVD video is MPEG-2. That's usually very uncompressed. It's a larger or it's less compressed. Four or five gigs in most cases, sometimes twice that. Right. And if you're talking about Blu-ray discs, you're talking about a, a lot more. much larger right. file. So what we're going to do is make our files small. So Handbrake is a transcoder. Yes, a transcoder. And what we're going to do is show you this real quick. First, there are presets. So we have, I've already loaded on my video. And what you're looking at, you can see the Joker over there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a small copy of Batman Beyond, Return of the Joker, one of my favorite animated movies. One of the reasons of all time. I, uh, people like me, love Handbrake is these presets. I don't, you know, if you're a guru of video encoding, you might want to twiddle the knobs and, and slide the sliders yourself. But the presets kind of, give you the ideal settings for most forms that you want to put this in. Right. right, so there's like Universal, there's iPod, you got Apple TV options. When you hover over each of the of the options, you'll see a little tooltip explaining to you what exactly is given to you. I like having the, the preview window open, that's what's open over here. So as I change the presets, you'll see the size getting larger or smaller, the, and that gives you an indication of how many pixels it's going to take right. up right there. And on the top of the actual title window here, you'll see the output size. 720 by 480 is the actual source, 720 by 368, because it's going to be cropping off some of those little black bars right. that were on the DVD. Well, also, there's no reason to have more video than you can display or use on an iPod Touch, let's say. You want to compress it properly for the device uh, that you're using. What are we going to compress for today? Okay, we're going to be compressing probably for the highest quality I can get. So I'm going to try to get a something as close to the source as I can, because I like to watch these things on my large but television. But still small file size. I want to be able to stream it on my network. Can we get down to about a gigabyte an hour? Can we get it that small? A uh, gigabyte an hour, I think we could do that. That's pretty All right. easy. All right. uh, but what we're going to do, first we're going to take a look at some of the problems I ran into with this particular DVD. That's one of the reasons why I want to use it as an example. So in this preview here, you can see you get, you can see what the video looks like. It's just a still image. I highly suggest doing this. There's a little live preview button. So I'm going to hit the live preview. And what it's going to do is create a preview based on the, the presets I've chosen so already. So it just compresses a few seconds. Right, 15 seconds of video. Now, right now, you can't see it very well. I'm going to try to zoom in even further. There's a lot of interlacing issues anytime there's any movement. Let's see if I can go back. Let's try to get that even larger. A cartoon may not always be the best way to do this because the frame rates on cartoons aren't necessarily as high frame rate as a regular video is. It may not look that good. Right, it so may, if you could see, yeah, I when can the see a little bit of that. Hands, yeah, you'll see it. You'll, yeah. If we get even further, you'll see it. Interlacing. There's the interlacing on the hand. It's an artifact that, that uh, actually comes from the way 
uh, television used to be done, which was every other line. And we are looking at stuff that's progressive scan, that is all uh, 720 or 1080 lines at once. Right, progressive. Right. And as if you look at something in a progressive scan that, that is interlaced, you'll see kind of this weird window shade effect, this Venetian blind effect. And that's one of the reasons why I always do the live preview to make sure that it's not going to happen. You don't want that. I found it happen a lot more with animated things than not. Mm -hmm. Simpsons DVDs, uh, Batman things, things like this. So I always double check because I don't want to be watching an interlaced picture when I could have done something about it. And Handbrake lets you do that. Does it have a de-interlacing feature? Yes. Or? So what you're going to do is go into picture settings, which is up here. We're going to hit picture settings. And you can see this little smoke window here. I'm going to try to zoom in, try to get this nice and big. So we've got a lot of different words here. De-telecine, de de-comb, de de-interlace. Yeah. So de-telecine has to do with how the video is interlaced when the frame rates are changed around. There's all kinds of explanations at Handbrake. Decomb is like uh, de-telecine, looks at every pixel. I like going with the interlace over here. And Turn this that is, all the way up. This is a slider, so you can go like decomb or deinterlace. Right. Deinterlace takes a longer time. Right. I like that because what that does is it's going to analyze each each frame, each pixel, all the time. It's going to take its time when it does. You're only going to analyze and rip once. You might as well uh, transcode once. You might as well take the time and do it right. And there are other settings. If for some reason you wanted to go to grayscale, maybe you got Sin City and you just want to change it to grayscale, right. or do you know is it? You can do that. But I'm going what to is, do again. I, I'm going to ask you a question. You may not know the answer. I don't know, certainly. What is the difference between decomb and deinterlace? Decomb. I think they're kind of related, it sounds like. There de certainly is uh, on the slider. Decomb, they said it's like de I was reading about this. I want to know the difference, too. Yeah. Detelicine is, is it's kind of like it's kind of like that. But deinterlacing de <laughs> is slower. Decomb is looking at every pixel and deinterlacing. So it's, it's how it's removing the interlacing. Mm -hmm. Not that it's removed. In both cases, they're removing interlace. Right. They're, okay. You're going you're gonna to get a smoother picture. Okay. It's just and, the technique used for it. And if that explanation wasn't sufficient, <laughs> mess around all you want. Go with decomb <laughs> and see what happens. I'll say, I'm going to say default. You know what? Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, you maybe try the faster one. There's Just like there's no reason to put more data in this compression than you need, there's no reason to take more time than you need. If it doesn't look better, then don't use it. Now, maybe when you're watching this compressed video or the HD version of this video of a video, you might not see right. the same interlacing I was seeing. I don't see it. Looks pretty good. I'm seeing some tears in this. Oh man, you got good eyes. I'm I'm a real snob when it comes to video, yeah. so I probably will go back to my favorite. Which and of is... course, you're ripping this for Aldrin, so he really cares, as we know. <laughs> he's got better eyes than I do. Your five-year-old really cares about the quality of the video. Well, when he's five, Daddy, me... Daddy, it's in the lace. <laughs> I don't like in the lacing. You know I don't like in the lacing. No vodka for you tonight. Well, he's turned into like an old man at the end. I don't know like, what oh, happened. <laughs> I don't know what happened. How, the, how old is old? He's now he's two and a half. Right two and now. a half. As, as we speak, he's two and a half. I doubled his age. Well, he's an old man. He's an and old his... soul. <laughs> so we can. So we, now we've messed with the uh, de interlace. I'm going to have it as slow as possible because I don't want uh, a lousy picture when we're doing this. We're going to go back to the main handbrake window and look at all of these fun settings. We've got video. You can change the codec if you want MPEG-2. I don't suggest MPEG-2. Because usually you have to have a license for MPEG-2. Is that right, Leo? When you're yeah, both to MPEG-2 it? and H.264, and actually all of these are technically patented, but MPEG-2 is uh, not as freely available. You have to have a codec. You've got to do more work, I think, for MPEG-2 than MPEG-4. And, and we should mention, we did not mention this, uh, but Handbrake, which is created, as I said, by French schoolboys, Handbrake.fr, actually I'm, I'm being a little bit silly about that, decided at some point a few years ago that they no longer wanted to include the MPEG-2 decoder, transcoder in there. They no longer wanted to include the DCSS uh, ripping technology. So th in order to rip a physical DVD, you have to pre-install another free program, VideoLAN, which everybody should have VLC. Mm -hmm. You may not even notice that you need it because most people already have it installed. But if you don't, VideoLAN.org, the VideoLAN client, that actually has the MPEG-2 codecs in there. Okay. It also has the ability to get a key off that DVD and store it in memory. At that point, uh, Handbrake has no trouble ripping the, the DVD, even if it's a copy-protected DVD. I'm a, I'm a fan of H.264 uh, anyway. I think it's better quality than MPEG-2, so use it if you can. The reason why I go with H.264 when it comes to most of my compressions is because the dumbest product I have in the house is the Apple TV. And I say it's the dumbest because it can only read like one kind of file when it comes to video. H.264. If the dumbest thing can do it, yeah. that means my PC can handle it, my Android <laughs> device can handle it, anything else can do it. But it that is kind dumbest of the, one. The lowest know. common denominator, the lingua franca, but it happens to be a very good codec that's going to give you good results anyway. It does so a good job. Use it, yeah. So if we were talking about the filters before, actually, we were talking, we should go to the size option. 
So this tiny smoked window, let me see if I can go up into here. We were talking about trying to make this as large as the original file. So you see 720 by 368. Now there's this section for anamorphic. You either have loose, strict, none, or custom. <laughs> Okay. This is, by the way, now you know why I use the presets. I, you're, you're getting this stuff. I don't even know what they're talking about. Anamorphic has to do with the widescreen versus the 4-3 aspect ratio. And I think I remember anamorphic videos have both stored in them. Mm -hmm. I don't know what loose strict custom is. I looked up, I looked, I looked this up because I'm like, okay, I want to make sure that the video I make is as close to the original as possible. Strict. If you, if you go with, with that strict, you go with strict. Yeah. If you want, if you want to be able to have a smaller file, or you want strict the strict is more compatible. It's, well, it's going to be the closest to the real thing. Loose will give you maybe a faster encode. It might give you something that looks slightly different. Yeah. But I don't want something that looks like some things I like loose, not my encodes. Right. Not no, there. That's no. exactly right. Loose slots at this casino not with your video. So I'm going to go with strict. That's not on by default. Pick strict because okay. if you're like me, again, you're going to be a video snob who's noticing tearing and all kinds of things. So it gives you a better result and it's more compatible. That's what I find. Okay. So so you actually you're still playing with settings? Still playing with settings? You're, you're such a nerd. Well, this thing is hand look, is this you can get a simpler encoder out there. <laughs> there are lots of different things. It's simple. Things. You Just get... take the preset. You go into the Apple TV, bonk. You could do I that. I have ne you know, in fact, they even warn you. They have a cute little warning. Are you sure you want to change these settings? That's the advanced tab. We're not even in the advanced tab yet. <laughs> We're not in the, that's not even. Oh. Oh. So I'm going to, oh. I'm going to go to frame rate. I'm going to make the same as source because again, why would you mess with that unless you want to make a smaller file? Maybe you want to make a flip book. Make sure this is always same as source. Now we're going to the audio section. As a nerd, I, I accept all the defaults, but you are a video nerd, so you need to mess with it. I'm a nerd, and I really love my DVD commentaries. Oh, yeah, you so, don't want to lose those. I know, this is strange. I guess I'm one of the few people that actually took advantage of these DVD audio commentaries. But you can see that you have different options, and you can embed them into the file you make. You might not even know that your, your H.264 videos could have more than one audio track, but they're in there. This one, These are generally uh, language tracks, right? right? This yeah. one right here, we have two different options for Dolby Surround and 5.1. Other DVDs I've seen have commentary tracks, French tracks, Spanish tracks. And all there is, I see, a subtitles tab. And... So we're going to go to subtitles, because yeah. I love having my subtitles, because sometimes when my two-and-a-half-year-old is losing his mind, right. I can't follow the story. Right. I still want to be able to see the subtitles. And you have lots of different options here. What Will your player give you the choice? Uh, I mean, you've got to use a player that can say, turn on and off subtitles. I noticed, for instance, we had Chinese subtitles. Uh, <laughs> when we were playing <laughs> videos back on the Raspberry Pi some time ago, that's because right. you turned on subtitles, and there was no way to turn them off. Well, some it depends on what your player is. Right. right. If you're using video land like you were talking about, it's easy to remove. It has checkboxes. Any for of those things. Stuff. Okay. If for some reason you want these subtitles burned in, you want them on the video all the time. That's an option. It is an option. You can click burned in, and what oh. it's going to do, it's going to take those bitmap images, because that's what that text is. It's going to overlay it onto every frame, and you're never going to be able to remove that. It's up to you if you want to do that. So we've also got different options. I'm going to get a French subtitle in there later. Closed captioning. Now, closed captioning, the difference between closed captioning and these bitmaps is that closed captioning is readable by more programs. I found the Apple TV can actually read it supports closed captioning, closed captioning. Yeah. it can't yeah. read the bitmap versions right. of the text right. but it can find that so if you wanted subtitles built in you could do that as well again make it for the dumbest box everything else can handle it apple tv can figure this out i'm not going to burn in any subtitles because i really don't want to see french subtitles when i'm watching back once they're burned in you can't get rid of them you'd have to re-encode the advanced tab i'm not messing with this okay that's thank enough. you that's like a 301 class this Holy is a 201 camoly. class you can really mess with this if you want. There's B-frames. There, I'm pretty sure Alex and Lindsay could probably explain this in his sleep when it comes to B-frames. I believe that's how often it, the program will look at changes in frames. So it might check every like two frames, 20 frames, whatever you want. I'm not messing with those. Chapters, that's self-explanatory. So now, what are we gonna do with this? We've set that up. We haven't talked about video quality. Okay, here comes the thing. You wanna talk about under a gigabyte an hour. Right. Okay, so the, when I started doing this with Handbrake, when I started looking at video encoding at all, I used to look at bit rates. That's what I'm used to. I'm not used to How many to this. bits per second required to play back this video? Right, now a DVD is, is burned at a three megabit to nine and a half megabit a second. So okay. there's no reason to make this, let's say I want to make this 
you know, 20,000 kilobits per second. With 20 megabits, right. it, it wouldn't make any sense. It wouldn't make no sense. So when you're doing this, there's no reason to say, okay, the larger number is the better number. Right. It makes no sense there. Take a look at your source file. If you've got, if you've ripped a Blu-ray, that's usually at 30 megabits per second. If you've got a TV show, an HD over-the-air television show, 30 megabits a second. So it's up to you how you want to compress that. For me, I found it pretty good at around 2,000 kilobits per second, which is 2 megabits, 3 megabits per second on a decent HD TV. This is also where you'll see slower hardware, less capable hardware may not be able to handle a higher bit rate. So that's another one where you might want to experiment. If you're using a Raspberry Pi, for instance, it may not handle 3,000 kilobits point. a second. It might have to be 2,000. And there are older devices out there that will only play video up to a certain bit rate, right. certain frames, frame rates. There are other, these are older devices. What's the lowest that looks okay for you? For me, it depends how far I am from the TV, quite right, honestly. Right. I'd say 1500 is the lowest I want to go okay. when it comes to really detailed things. You definitely see this, you see the compression just fail miserably when you have lots of little things on screen. So a bug's life, this is a great example. Blades of grass, tiny ants. Now what happens is they look like giant blocks. Right. If you can more bits is going to be better. You're going to want a higher bit rate. Right. You want to try to get as close right. as possible because that is a lot of data. So that's that's what I would do with bit rate. I always suggest two pass encoding. That just, just takes time in the encoding side. It doesn't matter. It just makes a better encoding. Right. So you should theoretically have a nicer looking file with that. Right. This constant quality thing is relatively new. I hadn't seen this and I didn't want to mess with it too often, but I had to learn to see what exactly is the hook of constant what quality. It's kind of like video uh, or variable bit rate encoding on a MP3 where you change the bit rate depending on what you need to give constant quality. I believe that that's exactly what it is. What it is. It's on by default. They, Handbrake says it's faster than the dual pass. They say the constant quality can produce the same quality as a two pass encoder. But a smaller file. Smaller file is right. what they're saying. Right. Now, what, what do the numbers mean? So it says RF20. All right, so if you go to RF0, that's no compression. And then 50 is the most compression. So the thing is you want to find somewhere in, in a good location for your DVD or your Blu-ray. I believe the, I can't remember what the, the Blu-ray one was. I'll have to find that in a minute. I'll definitely have a link to that in the show notes to find out what exactly is the best RF value for Blu-ray. What's the best RF for DVD? Okay, so that's Andy all in the Germany sentence. is saying, by the way, that the Raspberry Pi has hardware decoding which means that it can actually handle a higher bit rate than you think. That's because the CPU, as slow as it is, isn't really doing the decoding. The That's why it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell what's going to need what. Experimentation, trial and error is probably the best way to, to do this. And you don't want to over-encode. You don't want to make these files bigger than they need to be. Okay, I think I've screwed with this video as much as I want to. <laughs> no kidding. I've made the RF quality way too high. Let me so you're saying that the defaults don't necessarily give you the best results. Oh, you might want to tweak it. They'll give a you a bit. good one. But yeah. I think if you want, like, if you want more control over this, there are other devices than Apple TVs and Android devices. There are things that, if you're watching it on a very large TV, right. that's when this starts to matter. When I first started compressing, this is, gonna, this is hilarious. I had a DVD, I would compress it for my 640 by 480 SD TV. <laughs> and when I watched that video file back Ooh, recently, this bad. oh my oh, gosh, man. I wanted to like just take off my glasses, maybe step about 30 feet back, and maybe, maybe it'd look okay. But not good enough for me so anymore. So this is why you always keep the DVD. You can re-encode it. Re-encode it. And when you encode it this way, at least that copy is really right. good. And you can take, by the way, that resulting file, if you wanted to, you could re-encode that again. I don't recommend that, but you could. Because uh, Handbrake does more than just DVDs. And if you're going to be doing a bunch of these, because I, if I'm going to be doing this, I'll make this a preset. Handbrake is a batch mode, which is really nice. Right. You can just, don't forget there's an add to queue feature up here. I like to use this button. You can hit show queue and you'll see that right here, Batman Beyond Return of the Joker will be available for me. I've had mixed results with queuing up stuff. If, I, if my queue goes beyond about 30 to 50 items, I've seen some really wonky things. When we go, to maybe about, stick to 30 or 50, but don't go past that because if it, if it crashes while the queue is saved, it might not produce the same results. I've had issues with that. Just, just a little word of advice when it comes to Handbrake. And now, Leo, you know more about Handbrake than you ever wanted to see <laughs> well, because that's what I do. You've inspired me to go in there and maybe play with some of those additional settings that I usually just if, uh, if don't pay any attention to and just click the presets. So maybe I'll try that. Maybe I'll time. just give you one of my presets yeah. and you'll just be like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, setting. It's just way, way overdone. So now that you know how to use Handbrake, go out, rip all your movies, put them on the hard drive, and enjoy. We'll see you next time on No.